Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. The recent Louisville AAW Symposium, there's several presentations on boxes. I love boxes. There's a lot of versatility in boxes. In fact, at the last Saturday's uh, get-together for our club, well, I was helping a fellow turn a box. In this case, we've had a small branch of hazelnut. It's dry. It's a hazelnut sucker. Uh, and it didn't crack, so I said, okay, well, let's make a box out of this little thing. It didn't take that long. Good experience. And then I said, well, why don't I do that for a video for this channel? So I went ahead and, and made this box, but there was a technical glitch, and the camera operator uh, didn't get the cameras operating correctly, so okay. They're easy enough. I'll do three of them. Just one note about this. It is dry wood, hazelnut. Smells great when you're turning it. And for boxes, I opted for a very short tenon and a very loose fit, as opposed to many other boxes that take two hands to get apart. Anyway, let's turn this small little box. How much can fit into it? Eh, it's still a box. Let's turn it. This small piece of hazelnut sucker with the bark is mounted between centers. The drive center is a stub center clone. I like this drive center because it has small teeth that will slip when there's a catch rather than let the wood jump out and fly away. The downside is that it has small teeth that grind into the end and can slip. The solution is to keep tightening the tailstock whenever this happens. For now, I need tenons on both ends. My skew is my favorite tenon cutter with a peeling cut. This works despite the irregular surface. Now the wood is mounted to a small set of jaws. I pick a spot for the lid cut about one third down. With a parting tool, I cut most of the way through the wood, leaving just a little bit in the center that can easily be twisted apart. I can safely twist it apart because both of the posing surfaces will be hollowed. Starting with the top, it is mounted to the chuck. To help the drill start well, I cut off the remaining nub in the middle. Then drill a one and a quarter inch hole about three sixteenths inch deep. This will be the interface with the base. That is followed by drilling a one inch hole to form the cavity of the lid. For a bit of refinement, a round nose scraper dishes out the point of the drill. I do not want to upset a fellow turner by leaving the point hole. I have swapped the box bottom back into the chuck. I'm using the same 1 inch Forstner bit to hollow this section. Tape marks the target depth. The warm hazelnut shavings smell great. Now for the tricky part, fitting the top to the bottom. I need a tenon on the top of the base. I also like to keep live center support for as long as possible. However, my cone center does not provide enough clearance. I can start my peeling cut with the skew, which gets me past the regular surface. Then I have to remove the life center and continue fitting to the top. Generally, ch cutting a chamfer on the top helps to know when I'm close. But still, I need to very gradually scrape down to a final fit. Incidentally, even though this is an end grain box, I do not want a tight fit. I want to easily remove the lid with one hand. So, not a wood turner's fit test project. There's no way I can hide this joint in the natural bark edge. The grain will never align and the bumps will never align. Instead, I decide to accent the joint by a V-cut at the joint. This goes well until I get a catch. My skew has too much unsupported edge. Oh well, here is a design change. Extend the V-cut. Actually, that looks great. If I had not pointed it out, no one would notice, let alone care. With that done, I can sand a little. There's not much exposed wood to sand. Whoops, I'd better take my last chance to dish out the drill point hole in the bottom of the box.
To finish the base, I'm using a smaller chuck from my mini lathe with an adapter for the thread. With the small jaws, I can hold the box with an expansion grip. Then on to trimming the bottom. To match the V-groove at the joint, I make a similar cut on the bottom. Then form a rim to sit on and dish out the interior. Perfect. Now to swap for the lid. However, instead of a straight tapered cut, I decide to form an OG curve. Essentially, I cut a cove on the edge, extending it out to encompass the irregular bark edge. At last, walnut oil for a finish. This time, the finish decision is driven by the bark. With walnut oil, I can treat the bark as well as the exposed wood. This completes this set of bark edge or natural edge or live edge little boxes. No, they don't hold much, but what they do hold, they hold with a flare. With the tight, thin bark, these are great. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website because my notifications are more reliable than YouTube's. Please tell your friends about my weekly videos. I appreciate your comments and questions. Please wear your full face shield whenever the lathe is running. That's my best safety tip. From which to mount it to, turn, to hollow the inside when I did not realize just how deep that rot went, how extensive that rot was. And it comes apart here, flies off. Did it happen? All accidents are really stupid in retrospect. I should have had my guard down. I did have my face shield on, and that's what saved me. But to hear again from the top view, just barely touch it. That last bit of wood comes apart, and there it goes. Conks me. It goes flying, eventually lands under the stool to the right. Face shield goes flying, it lands there on the floor, just in front of the lathe. I go flying the opposite direction, equal and opposite forces, you know. Wasn't hit so hard that I didn't realize I needed to turn off the lathe as it was jumping all over the place.